Welcome back, Chameleons, to my channel of SB Answers as your host, SB Answers. As your host, never get an educator, never getting through life with autism and mental health with my lived experiences to give you a few tips and advice along the way as well as taking you all on a journey. So if you're into any of these and more, feel free to take the time to subscribe or follow me on the following social medias listed below of this podcast today. So as a disclaimer as well, there's a few that I would like to point out. Number one is for some of this, this will be based on my lived experiences. So take it from a grain of salt for some tips and advice that might come with this as well. So if you see any signs and symptoms that may persist, see a doctor or medical professional team or else just seek out for second opinion with your medical team. Also in saying this, number two is just because I'm an autistic, don't forever assume that you've met just one autistic in the flesh and blood like myself via through person to person the channel or as a voice behind the mic because every autistic is the same every autistic will be on a different range of the spectrum as i go along sharing you with the podcast of the topics the terms i'll be using like asperger's and autism will likely to interchange a bit throughout the series and i don't want to offend anyone this will go for the terminologies of people with autism person with autism this again will depend on the person who has autism of the actual how they want to be addressed as an autistic or a person with autism so be respectable when you do meet an autistic hearsay because obviously at the end of the day we don't want to like I said offend anyone and and saying this that of this offense we should be able to just remove our mentality and just be respectable of others opinions beliefs and what have you because at the end of the day everyone's different ask an autistic first before maybe addressing them as an autistic person or what have you just get to know them as a person person as a whole behind the autism as well as removing that kind of wishful thinking. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm just your normal Joe blog sharing my lived experiences with Asperger's syndrome, Asperger's in short, and that some things I may share, how I cope on the daily may or may not work for you and what may or may not work for you will not work for me or vice versa and this that if there's any signs and symptoms that presents to the cases of what I share of these everyday topics of mental health and autism do seek professional advice and second opinion as well as also just in saying that that I don't wish to see any harm in the making. At least hopefully it's just to a heads up is that some of the information that I may gather as well as also just research with some of the information they and in the past and future will be limited based on the New Zealand websites that I've been researching on so I'll be taking it from certain other sources via through the Australian, American, UK site to gain a better understanding through some of these everyday topics. So now let's begin this. As promised I have mentioned that we're going to be talking about in the next podcast to the ones that are listening that this is all about ketonodia and ASD. So let's begin this so we can gain a better understanding shall we. So as we are aware, basically, or should know, ketotonia and autism spectrum disorder, or autism spectrum for short nowadays for this condition that many people refer to, ketotonia and autism spectrum disorder, or autism spectrum for short, I'm about to say, is also referred to as ketotonia-like deterioration in individuals with autism spectrum. This is founded in the research findings of the report of Dolce, Shah and Wing 2006, or it's known as also Autistic Ketotonia, which again in 2014 read up, Dijon, Banton and here. The onset of ketotonia in individuals with ASD is insidious. There is a marked and obvious deterioration of movement, vocalizations, pattern of activities, self-care and practical skills. Dot J-E-L 2006 quoted. More specifically, individuals typically exhibit slowed movement and verbalizations, slow task initiation and completion, difficulty crossing threshold, increased reliance on prompting, passivity and lack of motivation. Parkinsonian features such as akinesia and rigidity, day-night reversal, repetitive and ritualistic behaviors and seemingly purposeless agitation excitement. This was founded in the report of 2006 of Shah and Wing. The onset of catatonia and autism spectrum disorder typically occurs between the ages of 15 and 20 with the average age about 18 years but then again this will vary from person to person. They come as a later age or earlier age of life. However, a few cases have been reported outside the t- typical age range. In fact, research has conducted by various medical and psychological professionals 
that indicates an increase in recognition of pediatric catatonia. J 2014 study. A limited number of studies has also suggested catatonia occurs in approximately 12 to 18% of adolescents and young adults with autism spectrum disorder. Although many researchers believe this number may be higher, 2016 SHA reported this in their finding. Autistic catatonia may present as mild, moderate, or severe with symptoms fluctuating from day to day. 2006 report from Sha and Wing stated in its most severe form the stability of the individual's autonomic system is affected potentially impacting the heart rate blood pressure body temperature digestion metabolism thus affecting the body weight urination and defecation individuals become incontinent breathing and swallowing total immobility is also a possibility with reliance on others for all previously master self-help skills and activities of daily living individuals previously demonstrating some verbal skills May also become the individual is at risk to lose a substantial amount of weight and experience dehydration, increased food, and fluid intake. This severe presentation of acetonia like deterioration in autism spectrum disorder necessities hospitalization as the individual is at significant risk for serious medical morbidity and mortality. 2006 Sha and Wing report individuals with moderate autistic catatonia present with limited mobility and a decrease and speech, language, and communication skills, self-help skills, and activities of daily living. These individuals exhibit extreme slowness and the ability to initiate, continue, and complete a task that is given to them. The autonomic system may or may not be affected to some degree. The mild form of autistic ketotonia is similar to the moderate form. It presents as less severe and doesn't typically involve the autonomic system. Some individuals with autism spectrum disorder, however, may exhibit precursor ketotonia-like behaviours years before developing autistic ketotonia. However, these are usually reported in hindsight. These precursors include socially passivity, a history of slowed movement, a slowness to initiate and respond. While the presence of these characteristics do not in itself and of itself predict a future comorbid diagnosis of ketotonia, they are quote-unquote red flags necessitating increased observation and ongoing assessment. Because of the development of autistic ketotonia as a slow deterioration of the individual's abilities, it behooves clinicians who are knowledgeable in early signs of ketotonia-like symptoms to conduct a clinical observation and screen. These early steps will help guide to intervention and appropriate referrals as soon as possible to reduce the potential exasperation of ketotonia-like symptoms. 2014 report of the Zhang et al. An initial assessment is critical to a certain the degree to which the ketonic deterioration has interfered with the individual's everyday life, considering the impact on errors such as speech and communication, mobility, self-help skills, activities of daily living, leisure skills, and work or school life. So the symptoms that may present, as you may be asking, will vary from person to person, but as it quotes here, the symptoms described are alarming and may be indicators of the early development of catatonia. Catatonia is a distinct cluster of mood, motor, vocal, and affective disorders that was first described by German psychiatrist Karl Kalbum in 1874. Hotel 2013 states in the report, once thought to be solely a specifier for various psychotic and mood disorders such as schizophrenia, primary mood disorders, and mental disorders due to a general medical condition. It's now recognized in a Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, DSM-5, American Psychiatric Association, 2013, which I clearly mentioned before how this is working around worldwide of the Diagnostic Manual, which hopefully I'll either A, link it in the description of this podcast, resource. As an associated feature of Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, it includes a revised diagnostic criteria. Increases in catatonia research in Autism Spectrum Disorders have resulted in the emergence of promising treatment and interventions depending on the severity level of the symptoms. J.A. 2014 states. So next question you may be wondering, how is catatonia diagnosed? The answer to this is characteristics of catatonia and autism spectrum disorder may have some overlap in symptoms like many conditions that does for autism, such as repetitive behaviours, reliance on prompting and seemingly purposeless agitation which may lead to misdiagnosis or failure. The two key factors when making a diagnosis are the emergence of the new symptoms and or a change in the type of pattern of pre functioning. This was stated in a 2005 report by Yazid 
Dylan Quinlan and Gazzy Dylan. For example, reliance on prompting may significantly increase while the ability to execute prophecy master tasks such as dressing oneself or a completing a meal within a reasonable amount of time significantly decreases. Essential components of evaluation include clinical observation and the use of standardized and non-standardized assessments, including the Bush Francis Catatonia Screening Instrument or in 1996 BFSI as abbreviated short, a subtest of the Bush, Fink, Petrides, Dowling and Francis rating scale BFCRS in 1996 by medical professionals and clinicians eligible in the manifestations of autistic catatonia. In 2006, the Sha and Wing has stated the blueprint for the assessment of catatonia and autism spectrum disorders may also be helpful in diagnosing the condition. The clinician then must consider the entirety of the person's history, including parent, teacher, and physician, interviews, videos, and data. The clinician then, however, should evaluate the changes across many different areas such as weight loss, resulting from eating and or drinking difficulties, toileting accidents, slowness and other abnormalities and mood of movement, increased prompt dependency, reduction or loss of speech and catatonic excitement, occurrences of inappropriate behaviour and behaviour that is not within the individual's control. This was stated in Sha and Wing in 2006 report. The lorazepam challenge test, however, may be used to diagnose catatonia, particularly in Individuals exhibiting the more severe form. Dot Shay 2014, Senior Arts, Dot Shay Van Kemp, D. Hart, and Gazaboo 2014 state. An individual suspected of having ketotonia is administrated one or two milligrams of lorazepam intravenously or intramuscularly. The test then should be conducted when our diagnosis of ketotonia is suspected. Sharma, Jenna, and Sharma in Agrol. 2014 states a positive response to the test which is rapid resolution of all catatonia like symptoms strongly supports our diagnosis of catatonia dnr el 2014 states similarly golpidin a non-benzodiazepine is also used to diagnose and treat catatonia there is a lack of response to lorazepam in 2014 senior el 2014 states this. other medical conditions may play a role in the development of catatonia including encephalitis autoimmune diseases biological factors, epilepsy, hormonal changes during puberty, and the use of antipsychotic medications. This was stated in the 2006 report by Dotche, Sha, and Wing. Healthcare professionals must first roll out treatable causes when presented with an individual with autism spectrum disorder, demonstrating ketone-like symptoms. Treatment and management are imperative. When a treatable underlying medical cause cannot be identified, here and Malone, 2004 states. Unfortunately, at this time, Few professionals are even aware this condition exists, let alone qualified to conduct an appropriate clinical assessment, provide treatment recommendations, or make appropriate referrals. Untrained clinicians may lead to misdiagnosis interventions as professionals and caregivers may assume that the individual is engaging in these behaviours, quote, on purpose. 2006, Sha and Wing reported, it is critical to note that if the condition is not properly treated, an exasperation and worsening of symptoms more likely to occur. Therefore, referrals to professionals with knowledgeable and understanding of the nature of ketone like deterioration in individual ASD and current evidence-based treatment options are essential when the condition is suspect. Next question on our list is how, how is ketotonia in individuals with ASD treated? The evidence basis supporting the treatments for ketotonia in individuals with ASD, however, is limited but is growing. This section of my overview for you guys to understand will provide a understanding of the current research on treatment of autistic catatonia. In 2016, researchers including Aspie and Grossman assert that, that true catatonia behaviours are motiveless and without function. However, this isn't to suggest that teaching strategies and prompting techniques based on the principles of applied behaviour analysis, which again I have mentioned about this in one of the treatments and therapies section of my playlist on my channel which either a i'll link it in this podcast below me after this is finished or if you want to sit tight after this podcast is finished after editing i'll put this into the link somewhere in the description below as well are not the same to benefit individuals afflicted with this condition in fact clinicians train in a applied behavior analysis and are also educated about autistic ketotonia would be able to recognize the syndrome and provide appropriate evaluation and thera therapeutic intervention and or make referrals to pertinent healthcare providers. A behavioral evaluation using functional assessment or FA for short method low with initial assessment I recommend to a student to what degree the ketonite 
deterioration has interfered with the individual's everyday life and at to what level? Would it be mild, moderate or severe? Antecedents, interventions, prompting strategies and reinforcement are all effective components of treatment. For example, reinforcement can, ta- conduct or can target adaptive behaviour such as decreased time to complete a task or increased appropriate use of utensils when eating. The BFCRS and 96 is a recommended tool to be included as part of this evaluation to assess the severity level of the catatonia so appropriate methods and course of treatment can be implemented. This was stated in the 2014 report by Senior EL. Individuals with autistic catatonia may benefit from the non-medical psychological approach and management pr- principles described by Shah and Wing in 2006. The management principles provide strategies for each area potentially affected by catatonia, such as incontinence, eating, drinking, and swallowing, speech and communication, motor movement, and catatonia like excitement. In addition to their blueprint for assessment of catatonia and autism spectrum disorder, Shah Amon also developed a blueprint for the treatment of catatonia and autism spectrum disorder for all severity levels. Electroconvulsive therapy (ECT) may be administrated to individuals demonstrating the more severe form of ketamine-like deterioration who do not respond to the psychological approach and management principles or psychopharmacological treatment, senior EL 2014 states. Research to date indicates more effective alleviation of ketamine symptoms when administrating bilateral ECT and or high doses of lorazepam as compared to other approaches and should be strongly considered when treating the severe form of autistic ketamine as this severe form can be fatal. In some cases, symptoms of catatonia remain after treatment, but not to baseline pre-catatonia levels. A systematic review of interventions by Dijon EL 2014 found that decreased frequency of bilateral ECT and or doses of lorazepam following initial successful treatment often results in recurrence of some catatonic symptoms. Dutch A 2014 has noted that in some cases, maintenance bilateral ECT may be critical to reduce the recurrence of catatonic symptoms which was stated in 2010 Watchill Humidia and Doche's report. So, pharmacological treatments for ketamine include benzodiazepines, specifically lorazepam. It's the first choice of pharmacological treatment. Zolpidem, a non-benzodiazepine, is used when there is a lack of response to lorazepam. Some individuals with autism spectrum disorder presenting with ketamine symptoms may require accommodation of the SHA and wing to the six approach and or lorazepam or zolpidem. 2014 Joshi report states. 2014, the Dijon ER review determined the current body of research is promising but indicate caution should be exercised when making recommendations for treatment. They strongly suggest the need for more robust, controlled, high quality studies to further determine the safety and effectiveness of these treatments. Joshi 2014 also states or asserts that these treatments are the best recommendations available at this given time. Based on clinical research, in order to assert a positive outcomes. However, he indicates the need for the treatments to be gouged further as research increases. The res- the authors of this clinical corner article agree with the Duchess assessment based on their years of experience working with individuals with autism spectrum disorder who develop catatonia along with their clinical research. In summary, all staff and parents need to be properly trained in order to increase understanding and provide appropriate interventions. I hope today, as I'm sharing this background, will was helpful to you and addresses some of your concerns for your child or adult and increase awareness of the potential development of kitten-like deterioration in individuals with autism spectrum disorder, as that may be the case with your son or daughter, helps ensure appropriate assessment and treatment at the onset of the condition. When left untreated or improperly treated, the disorder can become chronic or develop into its most severe presentation. Knowledge gleaned by parents, medical professionals, special educators, clinicians, and all those working with individuals with autism spectrum disorder will decrease the likelihood that this disability condition will remain hidden in plain sight. This was quoted in 2015-16 by Asby and Grossman. So this ends my podcast. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back with you shortly. Also, where to find me, this again will be listed in the socials, but just to tell you right now is Facebook is my Aspie.answers, my Twitter 
again will be SB Answers, which they're both capital A. Spotify, obviously, is SB Answers, which is capital A, capital A. YouTube is SB Answers, again, capital A. Patreon is my crowdfunding page right now. You can find me on patreon.com, SB Answers, basically. And for those of you who don't know what Patreon is today, for those who are listening that are new, I have this set up for funding for future projects like this one of my podcast versus my merch that I've been designing which I'll share more briefly soon about my merch update or even in this podcast right now as I'm addressing this to you guys is that it's like a crowdfunding page or funding page for creators like me or content creators, music creators, whoever it may be that's seeking out funding to support themselves in a way of maybe say they need extra equipment for their cameras versus maybe their radio equipment if they were doing something similar like I am doing today or covering the rent travel costs what have you and in saying this also basically for the merch you'll see me basically maybe wearing it once in a while on my youtube channel as well as maybe you know out and about in public and so in saying this my merch site is spreadshirt.com life hyphen of hyphen and hyphen sb and another one you can find me on my social is, is for those who haven't and I like to read instead of watching or what have you as an alternative for you guys is lifeofansbweb.wordpress.com. So this wraps up everything. I want to thank you all for listening right now. Follow me on the socials that were listed below. Subscribe, share this podcast to friends and family. You know, if you want to feel free to become a patron, patreon to support this future project as well as many others that are in the works as of this time feel free to you know donate big or small with me and this journey of it and also my merch obviously will cover the cost for this as well so i'll catch you all again on the other side sb signing out for now and bye